Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my second peer review uh, article presentation uh, deals with uh, leading innovation change in today's competitive uh, environment. And this presentation uh, was prepared by Dr. Peter Limes, myself, and Dr. Miguel Orta. Uh, Dr. Miguel Ota, he was about to be here tonight, but unfortunately he couldn't make it. Um, he's a well-known scholar. Uh, he is graduated from School of Law in Duke University, and he's a professor of law at Nova Southeastern University as well. And actually, uh, we put together this uh, wonderful article, and since for the uh, business community, well, the key points as an objective that we're going to cover in leading innovation change in today's competitive environment is the abstract of the top nine important sources of innovation, complexity in innovation management recommendations for future studies and references. Uh, the abstract. Uh, the purpose of this article is to explore the existing relationship between leaders and today's competitive environment and innovation. The three strategies that leaders uh, can use to create a climate that encourages innovation are the foundation of creativity, the application of a new idea, and the applicability of a successful concept. Uh, LeGrand and Wise reveal that 80% of the leaders in the organization believe that innovation is important for the organization's uh, future success. As for example, Bill Gates, the former chief executive officer of Microsoft, clearly believed and understood that innovation is an important element for the organization's success. Innovation, the way I see it, is the engine for growth for all businesses in the 21st century. Innovation and creativity share similar characteristics. Uh, corporate culture and a climate that encourages innovation are two factors that are often found within the leadership, leadership review. Therefore, a leaders need to understand the applicability of a leading system the theory among individuals and organizations by reshaping the social progress of the business world as noted by Vancouver. Now that we're talking about leading innovation, sustainability, and corporate social responsibility, uh, good question. Do you guys think that China is an innovative country? Yes. I don't think so. I have good news for you, ladies and gentlemen. They, they're manufacturing. They don't innovate. Thank you, Moises. China, mostly what they do on their own to expand their economy, they manufacture. But actually, the population, the Chinese population, they're not innovative. As on the other hand, in the Western society, the United States quite often produce a good, good uh, population of innovators. Now, we mentioned previously the top nine important sources of information, innovation. Uh, we have customers, customers to customers, networking, universities and colleges, technology transfer, suppliers, internet, trade associations, internal company resources. So here are presented the top nine important sources of innovation that if you guys need to do consulting for XYZ company in the market, as a consultant, as soon as you walk in to the company, you want to see the leading trend innovations in that industry. What really helped XYZ company to embark in order to be able to meet these specific nine top leading innovations in the market? If these are really a trending nine important sources of innovation to be considered. As a result of that, there also exists complexities in innovation and management. We have innovation. What's the level of innovation that you 
guys are discovering. Number two, the newness of the company, the numbers of years that the company have existed in the market, or simply, this is a fairly new company. As for example, do you guys consider Facebook an innovative media, social media company as an innovative? What about LinkedIn? What about Apple? Yes. Do you consider that this, in the technology sector, such as Apple, Dylan Parker, Dell Computer, do you consider this company have been great innovators in the technology industry? I mean, it already exists. They just, just promote new things. Now, what would be in the core value of understanding innovation, the source of importance of innovation to you guys, what would be the core value of innovation? Well, it comes the organization of capabilities. You have to be able to understand the functional capabilities, understand the integrative communication capabilities. That's always, I stress out the importance that communication at all level is imperative, is important. Then it comes the innovation potential, the product potential, the market potential, the project potential. So you can be innovative, but you need angel investors to support your innovative idea. Like, for example, um, you have come up with a new application app. Well, how will you become a solution to Apple computer with this is a specific new application app. Why? Because they have to be able to explore what's going to be the product potential in the global market, what's going to be the market potential for that specific app, and what's going to be the project potential, what's going to be the financial cost to be able to accept your leading innovation in our business plan. Lastly, the performance. It comes innovation process quality. It comes innovation performance. So once you're able to understand the top nine sources of leading innovation and among the complicities in innovation in management, then you can better understand how top management think about this important topic in the 21st business century. Now, recommendation for future studies. The authors of this article suggest that the following aspects should be considered for future studies. When exploring the existing relationship between leaders and today's competitive environment, number one, examine executive leading innovation style and the organization. Now, five phases of growth. Number two, companies in the automobile industry have reshaped their long-term commitments with consumers and society. Number three, leaders in the 21st business century should consider the top nine important sources of innovation and the organizational climate that encourages innovation. And number four, multinational corporations in the global economy need to understand the relationship between innovation and creativity. Are there any other questions, recommendations, concerns? No. Do you guys consider that innovation and creativity would play the same position in the global economy? Yeah. No? Yes, because they'll work together. So you're thinking, in order for you to be innovative, so the creativity aspect must be born. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, do you guys consider that the emerging economies market, such as Brazil, Russia, India, and China, the great countries, and including South Africa, and including Turkey, do you guys consider that those top emerging economies market are innovative countries? No. 
and, and again, you know, in order for you guys to be able to evaluate, you know, leading innovation in the 21st business century, I think it's not just simply uh, analyzing leading innovation from a standing um, singular aspect. You should be able to analyze leading innovation, how it's done in the Middle East, how it's done in Europe, how it's done in Central and South America, how it's done in the continent of Asia, in the continent of Africa, and then you can come up with a better plan and outlook performance in terms of understanding the top nine sources of innovation in the 21st business century global market arena. Any thoughts, suggestions, concerns, contributions to the written article? All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> The third um, peer review article dealt with the unprecedented business ethical dilemma in the world financial markets, written by Dr. Limes and Dr. Orta. The key points uh, in the objective to be covered are the abstract, uh, the foreign corrupt practice accounting and corporate social responsibility, uh, the ethical business leaders decision tree, Enron comparison scandal, recommendation for future studies, and references. The purpose of this article is to explore the importance of business ethics in the corporate business world. The code of professional conduct was introduced and written in 400 BC under the Hippocratic Oath. That's how all is the Code of Professional Conduct, 400 BC. Keep that in mind, that's important. Uh, the Charvet Axley out of 2002 brought financial transparency among uh, corporate management and auditors by preventing white collar crime. For example, uh, Clement 2006 uh, found in his study that a hundred fortune Corporations, only 40 companies engage on unethical behavior. The Foreign Cover Practice Act is one of the fastest changing acts in the criminal law arena. And at the same time, the SEC has collected $1.4 billion in fines. That's a big number in today's global economy because it will lead to the corporate scandals that are increasing at a rapid pace. So, meaning that that was written, the Code of Professional Conduct in 400 BC, that has been on the right over and over and over, meaning that Code of Professional Conduct doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So, that's where it comes, the police officer, the SEC says, hey, you know what? You're in violation, here you have a fine. So, you're not in compliance with the foreign Carver Practice Act. Now, in 1977, Congress passed the FCPA in response to the high number of bribery and the ethical misconduct by 300 American publicly traded companies in the United States. The researchers defined corporate social responsibilities as the organization's foundation to seek better economic, social, and environmental aspect by expanding the conceptuality of corporate citizenship and sustainable development. For example, Margolis and Walsh, 2003, reviewed 122 research studies and concluded that companies that adopt corporate social responsibility have a better relationship between ethics and financial reporting. 
as for example, KP and G conducted a survey on 250 global companies. KP and G survey concluded results that 83% published financial results in compliance with corporate social responsibilities. They also found 25% of the companies treat corporate social responsibility as a social relationship in the corporate business world, which is a pretty big number. Uh, the ethical business leader's decision tree. When you guys are dealing with ethical issues in the business world, always you have to follow the steps. Will this be the right decision to object or this would be the wrong decision not to object? Well, the researchers decided, well, is the proposed action legal, the right path or the wrong path? It can be either yes or no. Does it maximize shareholder value? Can we do it? Can we not do it? It is ethical to do it. Would it be ethical to refrain from taking this action? Can we do it? Can we not do it? And then, can we take the action, but if material disclosed the effect of the action to shareholders, would that affect the shareholders or not? And again, uh, bribery is a big, big deal in the business world, and especially when you're in top management positions. And giving my example, I back then in 2009, I did the right decision to simply walk away on signing off financial statements and numbers that were inaccurate and my resignation was presented in a piece of paper that as of that day a year I was stepping down as a senior financial analyst because I decided to take the right approach course of action in terms of following my principles ethical value position and to be in compliance with Serban Oxley Act of 2002 and not to be in prison from 20 to 25 years. So, and again, your ethical decision will come from your end. It will come from your decision of what is right or wrong from your objective belief in the business world. Now, accounting and business problems. Here are illustrated companies that have been um, stood out out there in the market for their actions. And also Computer Associates International, uh, the CEO and senior executive were indicted. Uh, five executives pled guilty and $225 million in fine. Also, Enron, as you guys are pretty much familiar, uh, bankruptcy. Enron filed bankruptcy simply just to walk away. And what happened with Enron, senior executive, were criminally convicted and over $60 billion in stock market losses. That's outrageous. The health, South, also overstated performance by $4 billion in false entries. Quest Communications International improperly recognized $3 billion in full receipts and also Xerox Corporation recognized $3 billion in revenue prior to when it should have been recorded. So this inappropriateness and false ramifications in terms of compliance with the laws and regulations cannot be observed by Sarvin of 2002. Now, for example, Enron Corporation scandal. Uh, the scandal of Enron was the most outlanded uh, case of ethical violation in the United States by exercising accounting creativity. Well, what do we mean by accounting creativity? There are three major violations under accounting creativity. The off-balance sheet method, mark-to-market method, and derivative 
manipulation, the off balance sheet method permitted Enron Corporation to high losses and real estate $586 million in earnings. The mark to market method allowed Enron Corporation to uh, simply pre tax profit by holding uh, $1.41 billion. Enron's derivative manipulation increased from $1.8 billion to $10.5 billion and also reporting more than $6 billion in gain for derivative. Recommendations for future studies. The authors of this article suggest that the following aspects should be considered for future studies when exploring business ethics for any professional organization. Number one, auditors and organizations need to understand the theoretical relevance that exists between Utilitarianism, a rights-based approach, a justice-based approach. Elements in each theory will help prevent ethical issues and inappropriate behaviors in the accounting profession. Number two, companies should communicate in the company's website the importance of corporate social responsibility, corporate citizenship, and sustainable development on how these three concepts support the accuracy and transparency of the organization financial reporting system. Point number three, the SEC should evaluate the ethical issues in external auditing and examine corporate governance guidelines when adopting IFRS in the United States market. And number four, professional accountants and regulators are encouraged to study the auditing issues that presently exist under the 11 chapters of Sarbanes Act of 2002. And again, when you guys are thinking about Sarbanes Act of 2002, you guys need to rephrase and have a point of reflections about the 11 chapters the word amended under Sarbanes Oxley out of 2002. Also, you guys need to understand the importance of corporate governance and corporate social responsibility in the 21st business century and also how can we prevent unethical acts from happening. And again, as business students, as professional in the business market, you guys should be able to understand that ethics is our number one priority, especially in the financial market. But not just only in the financial market, but as well as in other sectors and industries that would help us to become better corporate citizens in order to support big decisions in our community and promoting our sustainability basis by helping those individuals that have committed fraudulent events in the past to be a better citizens in our society by understanding the importance of abiding the law and understanding the consequences of the law when it comes to the grounds of ethics and to remember the code of professional conduct that was written in 400 BC. So this key point really helped us in a nutshell to have a better decision making process at the end of the day. Any questions, concerns about the peer review article presented to you guys. Monica, have you guys encountered any specific ethical dilemma in your company or, or have you guys witnessed any event as an outlanded case as such as Enron of ethical, unethical violence? Yeah. I have. Um, not too long ago, oh, an ex-co-worker open 
account under his own name using his own social security to get his own commission. And that's oh, that's, that's code of business conduct and he got fired. I think they found out the next day he got fired the next day. Uh, have you happened to know if there were any fines down the line to be imposed in that individual? No, no. Um, no fines, he just... Simply just walked away, yeah. admitted the charges. So I plead guilty, this is what I did, it was wrong, I admit it. The well, right he, thing. He, um, he, he said that he didn't know, which he was, a, he was a noob. He started in the company, it was his probation time. But I mean, you know, first, before you do something like that, you got to ask, you know. They like, that, that's a big deal for the company. Okay. That's like if I open a uh, hundred lines under my name, that's totally illegal. It's a liability. Exactly. It's a liability. Huge liability. Won't they be more strict on the other employees? Yes. Well, it's always been like that. It's always been like we're not allowed to either, we're not, we're not either, we're, we're not even allowed to access our own accounts to see anything. For example, if, I, if I'm a customer of the company that I work for and I want to check what's going on, if I went over or not, I need to tell my supervisor to tell an employee to help me, like if I was a customer. Because they track everything that you Yeah, do. and we have codes. Every time we access somebody else, somebody else's account or, or our own account, it, it punches in our, our um, employee code and everything. So it's a red flag. I mean, as soon as I enter my own account, the system is going to generate a message. What do you do? So he got fired <laughs> on the spot. Yeah, I, I had a similar situation to that extent when I began my career as an auditor. <clears throat> I'm not going to mention names because of ethical reasons. Uh, this individual, he was operating a company and then he was transferring funds from his company to a restaurant that he owned and at the same time he was doing wrong in Asia and it, I just simply just walked away because I said, no, 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 this is, uh, and then next day this individual, this company received a visit from the IRS, um, corporate officials, uh, the wrongdoing mm -hmm. in the financials. Uh, I think uh, money laundering is, is a big deal. Mm -hmm. That's why uh, doing wrong uh, should be enforced uh, at all costs. Uh, that's why to be um, one of the things that we uh, ask to professional accountants is to do the due diligence and meet the standards by promoting um, transparency, relevance, reliability in the financial statements. The financial statement must be free of error to be able to comply with the laws and regulations, to comply with GAAP, and to be able to have one singular a status, a statement in terms of understanding what's going on with the world financial market. Thank you very much, and it was a great pleasure providing this presentation to you guys. Thank you.